السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله <clears throat> Sayyidi, in Surah Al-Kahf, we see the youth believe they stayed for a part of a day, while in reality they have stayed for 309 years. What is the reality of it? <laughs> that they thought that they were there for just a day. But that Allah's time is not like our time. And that the, the time is of a timeless reality. What's important is what we said before in the state of meditation and tafakkur, anything we do of spiritual practices, you think you sat for let's say half an hour. But it actually may be a very long time that your soul was tr is being dressed in a world of light. What happens on the physical? is not the same that what's happening on the spiritual plane. And that's when Israhi wal Miraj, when Prophet went, came back and Sidna Aisha salam said, oh the bed was still warm where he left. Means his movement physically it looked like for you, you didn't recognize it. But to go and come back an entire universe was explored within the paradises. So timeless reality is not something that can be understood that when people begin to enter into this dimension of light, time may lapse, hours may be gone and they don't know where the hours went because they are moving with their soul. If Allah not allowing them to know what's partaking, what's happening and they come back not knowing what happened, what happened to the time. So it means that this is a miraculous reality and the state of light and timelessness is something that must be achieved. And the importance that Allah draws our attention to that state that the, the bewilderment of the not knowing how long the time has lapsed, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, why Allah Zawal change the appearance of the Ashab al-Kahf when Allah could have made the cave disappear or something. What was the guidance in that? Forgive my bad adab. What was that? Why Allah changed the appearance of the Ashab al-Kahf when Allah could have made the cave… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Cave disappear or something? I don't know. Uh, as salaamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Why is it said it is why is it said that Surat al Kahf will protect against Dajjal? Yeah, the writing and the reading, the reading of Surat al Kahf is a protection of Surat al Kahf as a protection against Dajjal because of the immensity of the whole talk. This is what we've been talking about that I think from the beginning of Muharram that the only way that Dajjal is deception and already the Dajjal system is on the earth, uh, all, all its leaders are deceptive and liars and the only way to traverse an ocean of lies is to be from the people of Allah. The people of Allah they don't fight out. Right? Air superiority, you're not going to fight on this dunya. 
you're not going to shut TV off in your home and everyone's home and turn all radios off and you're not going to fight shaitan because Allah didn't tell you fight shaitan. He said, seek refuge in me from shaitan. And the Asab al Kaf, Allah didn't say, raise arms now and fight them. No, He said, uh, run to the cave. So, this is already the answer for you from the surah. Is Allah says, when they try to make you worship that which they worship, run to the cave. So our job is to come and tell you, what cave are you planning on running to? Your living room and just isolate yourself because they have a cave also. They're hoping everybody just go into their living rooms and sit there, eat and drink and consume alcohol and, and watch inappropriate movies all day long. That's why they keep telling everybody, go to your home, then come back out, go to your home, come back out. But Allah is directing us, no go to your cave that when you isolate, learn how to isolate, learn how to make your connection, learn how to ask exactly what you're asking for. Ya Rabbi I'm asking to enter the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and to be under these ulul amr and under this shaykh's teachings and then sit and meditate. I saw a question there, said, I don't know how to meditate, please explain. You're not going to get explanation here like that, you've got to get the book, get the book that says timeless reality. Read the articles on the website, do some sort of uh, activity as a student. You can't come into a math class and say, excuse me, excuse me, uh, teacher how do you do math? Because you can't uh, do like that, study the material, study the websites, get the books, read the books so that the, the teaching can go in depth. Otherwise it comes back up and becomes superficial. The more that the students understand, they meditate, they contemplate, the challenging, the questions are not to challenge us to see if you know you can fool us with a different answer. The questioning should be so that to understand a greater depth of what was taught. Not, oh what, what about the apple here, what does that mean, huh, huh? What about the cherry over here, what does that cherry mean over there? It's not to fool the shaykh but to ask for in-depth understanding of what was taught. And that, that is where the ocean goes deeper and deeper and deeper just from my understanding. Say, how do we do like this? How does it become like that? That's what's important. But the whole dajjal that was from Muharram, that the whole dajjal system is, is deceit. And if you're planning on fighting deceit on the surface, well, I'll just turn off all the TVs and I'll, I'll stop doing… That's what these Wahhabis are doing because they don't know how to fight shaitan. So they say everything is haram but then they're secretly watching everything themselves. So you made yourself now munafiq with Allah You call people to that which you don't do. So to avoid hypocrisy that's not where the fight is, the fight is inside. Where I can't control outside, I can't control people. All I can try to control, try to control is myself. And I sit and begin to meditate on how do I clean my eyes Ya Rabbi, how do I make my connection? Uh, the shaykh has the book, get the book, study the book, go to the website. You don't want the book, it's all on the website but you just got to keep clicking article to article. And then how to make the connection, how to have that reality. Practice making that connection. There's now TikTok where you can get all these videos on meditation, meditation, meditation from our teachings. You just click on that video, watch the meditation, watch the meditation, watch the meditation on our teachings of meditation and you begin to learn. So that's the importance of, of going deeper. But definitely this whole system is to fight deceit, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. So, what is the reality of the sun in Surah Al Kahf and the mentioning of turning right to left? Yeah, that's what we talked about tonight. That they are under the reality and the isharat of the sun. Means the energy and the, and the power then emanating from the reality of the sun, which is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad. And the isharat comes from Prophet for their movement. 
That means everything in the reality of these seven souls is in taslim, in the ocean of taslim. And that the sun has a miraculous nature with the reality of those souls. So it's not something that uh, can be understood, that that has a, a tremendous reality. That it wasn't sitting and burning them because they were in open view. Allah describes that they were open to the atmosphere. Had the sun just sit on them and cook them, they, they would have had cooked physicality. But the fact that the sun was avoiding the harm but at the same time causing their movement of left and right. But the depth of it and the spiritual reality is that the isharat of the representation of eternal light was continuously guiding them because the sun what it represents? It represents eternity. And the servants of Allah whom are governed by something eternal and not something physical and that had a tremendous importance. But again it's to enter the cave and to be dressed by these seven souls inshaAllah and that to have a reverence and have a love for them. We have the taweez of Ashab al kaf this is the month to get the taweez for Ashab al kaf put the taweez in your home, in your bedroom. These names and seven names are written on that. Recite these seven names and ask for their barakah and their nazar. So this has again tremendous importance. Their names are, are very important for Naqshbandiya, Taliyya and they play an extremely important role in the protection of what's coming, of difficulties and unimaginable hardship and harm that this dunya is wishing to put upon people. This dunya has a plan to take away six out of seven people. And Mawlana Shaykh would teach this all the time. So this is an immense hardship and those whom Allah has written for them to be saved, then Allah has already written for them also all of the tools of their safety. So there are, there are realities and all of these things that are being dispensed but it takes a belief, right? So I'll give you back examples of taweez is that when Sayyidina Musa was de dealing with Allah Allah said, look we're going to send a punishment and uh, all these homes everyone's going to be killed. But from this naz that you did take the blood of this and put on to the doors of your people so that when the angel of punishment's coming to take these people, your people who put this blood on the door they'll be safe. Two questions, does Allah know who believes and doesn't believe? And do the angels know who believes and don't believe? Do they need blood to, to define that? No, Allah could have caused all of them to die in their sleep and the other ones to be living. And the angels could have plucked each one because they have everything already written on their, their encrypted system. They're not looking for physical eyes and look for a sign of blood. But this is always a sign from Allah is that, no you need to put the blood on your door to show Allah that you're humble and you believe. Because Allah is the one who's going to, to bring the punishment. Allah is the one whom always punishing, no devil punishes, Allah punishes. Nobody can harm what Allah is the only one who can bring harm and can bring safety. But Allah wants to see from His servant, are they humble? Because if they're not humble, well that can be its own course of difficulty and Allah can humble anybody with the extreme difficulty. So these taweez and these examples are examples of humility that only Allah gave them to us as inheritance for the tariqah and dispense them, make sure that the people have them. So when you have the taweez for Ashab al kaf the names and their holy names are there, recite their names in your home and ask Allah to send a dressing and a blessing. Mahnush and kafartush from these seven Ashab al kaf they are jinn and they are important in the Naqshbandi shajara and Naqshbandi protection in last days. They're still alive, their lifespans are, are extremely long. 
and whatever support they gave to Ashab al-Kahf, Allah has given for them to support the tariqah. That their state of Ashab al-Kahf was not that they fell asleep and Allah kept them sleeping, but from the jinn nation they put upon them a covering of energy. And that covering of energy sealed them and took them into a, a state and the jinn did that and gave them that state and their responsibility was to keep them protected with that state. And that same reality will be brought upon this earth for this Dajjal people whom are planning to destroy and to annihilate the earth, they plan Allah plans better and nobody can outdo Allah's plans and Allah's safety and Allah's protections. And Allah has given all of these under the authority and the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad and they all answer to the presence of Prophet So they play a very important role in the tariqah. The ta'weezes are important, they want to see their names on the walls, Allah wants to see the people believe. They put the ta'weez on their body, they put Ashab al-Kahf in their home, their cars, their walls. So these are all the markings of belief and humility. And we are people whom we completely rely on Allah and we continuously show that we are nothing and humble, Ya Rabbi. And that's what brings protection inshaAllah in last days and brings Allah's satisfaction and, and ridha and, and uh, forgiveness and satisfaction upon our souls inshaAllah. Arrogance and, and uh, pride get you nowhere. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Is there a reality to the number of years Ashabul Kaf slept? Of course there's a reality <laughs> of which I don't know but I know that the, you're not going to sleep 309 years so for, for now we, we, don't <laughs> we don't need to, to, to get to that unless you know somebody's wishing to sleep for a long period of time. But it has its re reality of course, but uh, of what it is for the presence now and how we can use it, that's not what they're giving information about inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah From your talk yesterday, does the soul only fragment into four parts or is it able to fragment into further parts? These are different realities. Your soul, your ability is broken by four desires. Why you're not whole? Why are people not whole? Because their nafs has overtaken them so now one section of your power is gone. Your hawa, your wanting of desires, your dunya desire now three and shaitan the fourth. So these four elements have broken your power. So it's for us just to understand it's like you're in four pieces somewhere. If you could pull your leg, your body, your arms and head back on then you would be whole and that's the reality. So that this wholeness to come requires the conditioning of your nafs, your dunya, your hawa and shaitan. The shaykh, the shaykh can do that, that's why if you meditate in his presence under his tajallis and under these associations and then you try to do it at home it's not the same because you can't do that, you can't bring yourself to be whole. Because when you go home you're under the authority of your nafs, your dunya, your hawa and definitely shaitan. But when you come into their oceans then shaitan's not going to sit there, he's going to run. Your dunya, your hawa, all of that will come under their control and as a result in your wholeness they can give that servant an experience and bring them into an ocean of energy and to feel that energy. And then the same time the shaykh is training them, control your nafs and then you see all the teachings for her, controlling nafs. Control your hawa, that to control your, your desires because they overtake you. And then he gave you formulas, well don't eat fast food and 
Make sure you make du'a over everything because your hawa, nafs and shaitan are all going to go crazy with the wrong food, the wrong drink, all of these different desires and, and elements that people put upon themselves. How to control their dunya to be of service to Allah and then how to fight against shaitan is all of them. By doing all of them they're coming against shaitan and, and the authority that shaitan will have over them. Until they can gain some element of control on that so that they can reach to be a state of wholeness. Those are in the talks of the levels of nafsa amara, nafsa lawama is as they're gaining control and more energy is coming their soul's reality is dressing them, will, will become radiya, ridwa, Allah's ridha dressing them and they feel a grace and emanation, they feel these energies. Because they're not quartered into four elements, they've pulled themselves together and they continuously battle these separations and these bad desires. As much as they can keep it together, as much as they feel the energy of the soul and the power of the soul dressing them. But that's why it's the importance of the meditation so that you want the energy of the shaykh like a portal that when the shaykh's presence comes and your energy is good with it, you would learn how to meditate and connect with that energy. Their soul is going to cause a fluctuation in all the energy around you because they're of a angelic reality, they're of a paradise energy coming. Their soul is not the energy of the dunya, the body is the energy of dunya. Everyone has that energy locked inside of them. When Allah reverses their death before their death means that their paradise reality, their soul's reality is dressing and whoever calls upon that energy is bringing a, a door of paradise into their atmosphere and into their environment. As a result of that energy being present with you it's a door to enter into because as soon as you meditate that door is coming closer to you. As soon as you meditate the door comes closer to you then they teach you the meditation, ask that it dress you. As soon as it begins to dress you and you take yourself out of the formula you can pass through that portal and enter into their realm and into their understanding and their life inshaAllah. And that's what they call the hudur to keep the love and then enter into the fana. The more you can go in to that reality you're losing your own self and self-importance. As a result of losing yourself you're going into the fana of the shaykh. If you can be lost in the fana then you'll come in through the baqa. You'll be brought anew in that reality. So it means you pass through that portal, that becomes the whole training. So this dunya will have the dajjal version in which they're going to open doors for their shaitans to come into this realm to wreak havoc and for those whom are here to go into their realm to be completely destroyed and that was the, the, the movie. Is it bird in a box? What was the movie we quote? We don't want to quote the wrong one. Bird box? Bird box? Yeah, the bird in a box where everything was just going crazy like black matter, black matter had entered into the realm and people were just… the worst characters were coming out and becoming crazy, violent and… So all, all of these things whatever we're seeing in movies it, it's existing. Otherwise uh, Allah must have created it. These are isharats and signs for people that they should be practicing and building their energies, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Are screens also portals like TV, iPads, phones? Any, any type of energy has a, has the, has the system of a portal. Not a portal you can enter but a portal they're entering. So most definitely because their sound and their vibration and their energies. So as soon as you put on the TV and their very negative images they're coming through. So anything we do 
and a sound and an energy is coming. As a result that energy is not dead, science teaches you, you can't destroy energy. So that energy is manifesting. What is it manifesting as in your home, your living room? The sound you listen to, the, the noises, they're manifesting. The, these movies are like trains of you know shaitans coming through, especially if they're, they're graphic and horrific. If you don't have the energy to cast it out, well then they're coming whoever's stronger. If the individual's trained and stronger then they come he crushes them. If they're not then they come and they occupy the space and they begin to make the energy very negative. And so people who watch like a lot of these sort of horrific things they become very dark looking themselves because it's affecting them, it's dressing them and begins to now change them. So that's the danger of everything has a manifestation, it's the ability to clean the space, play Qur'an, play salawats, you know play the zikrs in the living room on a, on a good sound. If it's your home and you're by yourself you can do it, you play it on the speaker because the zikr comes loud with an energy like a horseman. They come as the, the riders and the knights of the heavens, they come with the energies and they begin to clean the environment. But do you have the ability to go into the TV? No. But any si source of satanic energy is definitely a portal for shaitans to come this way. So their telephone is a portal for them to come in, their computer is a big portal for them to come in. So all of these devices are for them to enter into this realm. Do you have the ability to enter their realm? Not with those devices until they begin to make specific portals that they are sending people into those. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Thank you for your teachings. We need a little bit clarification. I don't know how to ask, please forgive me. Is Qur'an reading us or the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad reading us or both? What do you want it to be? <laughs> you're reading the Qur'an, most definitely you're reading the Qur'an. Now this is should be clear but if you're using your head too much you have to think with your heart. You're reading the Qur'an, your two eyes are looking. But how come it's not giving you its secrets? So there's a limit in which you can read Qur'an. But Qur'an is actually observing you, its light hits you, comes back with a code that you don't have that frequency for it to keep penetrating and sending its reality. It's just analogies for people to understand what's happening. So it has a light, if it sends to you and sees the authorization it will keep going deeper and the lights begin to flow to the servant. So that's an understanding. Then I taught deeper that, what is that light? Well that has to be then the light of Prophet because the presence of Prophet must be there. The Qur'an is Allah's uncreated word emanating from the heart of Prophet eternally. So when you're holding Qur'an that light that coming is mixed with the light of Prophet so it recognizes that if you have that love or even if you have that reverence, if you're somebody whom doesn't believe and has absolutely no respect for Qur'an, do you think it's going to give you its codes? Every phone, you have a phone? If I pick up your phone can I get into your phone or it's locked? This is a phone that some Japanese company made. You think Allah doesn't have encryptions and codes? That anybody can pick up anything and pull out secrets from it? No. But it's such a smartphone, the Qur'an is so powerful it actually looks back at the person and says and reads them with a light and says, no this person has no good intention, gives them nothing and just <coughs> fire and punishment, fire and punishment until they become scared of it. 
because it's reading them and not giving them what they think they're going to get out of it. So it's, it's alive, it's Allah's uncreated holy speech. So of course it has immense power, immense power. So at every level the answer is correct, you're reading it, sure. And that's why people get very little understanding from it. As soon as they have the love and the ishq of Prophet now that light recognizes you as ashiqeen. So it sent an encrypted eye like your telephone before you had to enter a cone. Now it looks in your eye, your phone looks to your eye. See, it's, who's in this eye? So the Qur'an is much more powerful, looks into your light and sees that this is a, a lover of Prophet and begins to dress them, begins to bless them. And then they go deeper with the deeper the love they have then the more that is penetrating within their reality. So you have to think of this through your heart and contemplate through the heart, not trying to the mind to make sense of this. This doesn't make sense to anyone's mind. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, as al mursaleen, Muhammadillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.